Hey guys, I'm doing a GoPro vlog because I addressed this whole thing about Patreon and social media sites like Facebook and Twitter deplatforming people and its impact on the web design and development field. Now I want to do a quick update to this because more information has been flowing since my first vlog about that. And uh, so what's going on right now? Well, right now we're seeing a collateral damage effect, if you will, with regards to this whole Patreon thing. What does that mean? Well, I'll just give you a background here. So Patreon is this uh, business where uh, YouTubers and vloggers and uh, podcasters could have people sign up and pay a subscription and Patreon processes the uh, subscription. I, give the, I think they give you like a private area and so forth so you could have premium content. So a lot of creators are using this and it was created by this company, this Patreon company, which is VC backed and based out of California. And uh, they're a pretty big outfit. They, I think they raised over a hundred million. Anyhow, so uh, they deplatformed some very prominent right wing YouTuber guy named Sargon of Akkad. And um, so before you guys get political about this, this is not a political vlog, this is a business analysis. This is looking at the opportunity and lessons that can be learned from this whole incident. So let's not get political. I don't wanna get into that here. Anyway, so Patreon decided to basically shut this guy's business down because he was, he was processing all his support through Patreon. He was making like 12,000 US a month. And he was uh, doing it all through Patreon. So Patreon decided that this guy had did something that was uh, untoward, something that they didn't like, not even on the Patreon website. He's, he apparently has, he said something, he said uh, some bad words on some other person's vlog, not even on that site. Anyway, so long story short, Patreon decided to knock him out. Boom. And apparently they've done that before. So basically they said, that's it. Uh, we don't like your politics. We don't like what you said. It's not illegal, but we don't like what you said. So we're basically shutting you off from your income. Uh, in response to that, some big name left wing people, people who don't agree with this guy, people who don't agree with Sargon or Cad, they said, you know what? This is not acceptable. We're not going to have a society of... Uh, technological uh, oligarchs, companies deciding who, who, who has the right to earn a living or not, depending on whether or not we like their politics. Anyway, so a guy named Sam Harris, he's not exactly a right winger, hates Trump, and he said, that's it, he shut down his Patreon account, boom, and he's one of the biggest out there on the platform. So uh, what happened as a result of this whole thing, I think Patreon lost like 20% of their business within a sh very short period of time, like a couple of weeks. 20%, that's a huge hit. And I think it's still rolling out. The damage is still rolling out because what has happened now is that people who have nothing to do with politics, Sam Harris sort of dances around politics, but you have people who have nothing to do with politics, had nothing to do with the situation. They found that their Patreon subscribers dropping like crazy as well because a lot of people, you could argue approximately 40% of the people are right wing. And you got, you know, 40% are left wing and you got the, that, that group of people in the middle who are, uh, you know, in the middle on the fence. But nonetheless, you're going to expect at least 40% of people didn't like Patreon's deplatforming of somebody. And so they're saying, you know what, I know they, they go to some creator who's got a, you know, a site or a blog on, you know, I don't know, cooking or something. I forget the specifics, but anyway. So people who have nothing to do with politics have been getting financially hit in terms of collateral damage because of this, because of this whole Patreon deplatforming thing. Now people are starting to look around. So famously, a couple of big libertarian right wing people out there are uh, Jordan Peterson, this other guy, I forget his name all of a sudden. I should know his name. Anyway, and they're thinking about creating their own comp competitor to Patreon. And so the race is on now. Patreon, I think, shot themselves in the foot business-wise. They've already paid a price. I think the price that they're gonna pay is only gonna, going to increase. But here's the other thing. 
a lot of people, creators who are using Patreon, a lot, a few are starting to realize now, but they don't need to use Patreon. They have to put a few money bucks down, create their own gateway, their own payment processor. You can do that. You get your own merchant accounts, you deal with a bank. There's many, many out there and uh, you don't need a Patreon. So what this means for us web designers, web developers, it creates a huge opportunity. As I've been saying for the longest time now that web design and web development is still a huge business, even though the web has been around for 20 years, don't expect it to go away anytime soon, that's for sure. So now that uh, this whole debacle has occurred with uh, Patreon, uh, people are starting to look at uh, creating their own websites or beefing up their websites and doing their own pay payment processing because what they've seen, not just with Patreon, but with famously with YouTube shutting down accounts, Twitter shutting down accounts, Facebook shutting down accounts, not for illegal activities, but for politically deemed politically incorrect activities. They don't like their point of view. And I'm not here to argue whether the point of view is uh, good or not, but what that shows you is that you don't want to be uh, subject to the whims of some corporation. At the end of the day, I have this YouTube channel here with 100,000 subscribers, been building up for a while. But at the end of the day, I have no illusions. I don't own it. If I were to uh, piss off the YouTube gods, the YouTube nerds, they could shut me down like this and I really don't have any recourse. It's their platform. So it's a good thing to have your own site, your own uh, processing. It doesn't mean to shut yourself off of social media. No, it's a great tool, but you should have uh, backup plans and multiple ways in which you can interact with your audience. Number one. Number two, you should have multiple ways to process payments. Like for me, I use PayPal for many, many months, almost 20 years now, or since, you know, for a long time. I use PayPal, I have Stripe, and I also have my own merchant account as well. Although uh, the merchant account I used to use on my, my live store, but uh, now I just use Stripe and PayPal. But with the new store that's coming out, we're going to be re-implementing all these things uh, very quickly. Although, I don't think I have uh, an issue with um, with Stripe or PayPal shutting me down simply because I don't have, you know, I, I teach software development and business and freelancing. I don't, you know, it's, it's hardly controversial. So I don't think that would be a problem, especially given my record. I've been with PayPal for near, I guess, 20 years now. I forget. I've lost track. Anyhow, uh, so what entrepreneurs, these young entrepreneurs are learning, creators are learning, but you have to be diversified. You have to not be dependent on one particular company to process your orders or one particular platform to reach your audience. You should be diversified. All this means is that for web developers, there's a huge opportunity because uh, I talked about this trend starting a while back where people are starting to realize that they shouldn't just have social media presence, they should have their own website as well. So the web, the personalized website or the corporate website is making a comeback, I think. Not that it really went down, but I think it's gonna be supercharged in ways we haven't seen in a long time simply because of these situations. So there you go, that's the point of this vlog. I'm shooting this on the GoPro Hero because I kind of covered this and I didn't want to go through the trouble of, of using this camera. This camera is my main cinema camera. I shoot all kinds of stuff on this and uh, it shoots amazing broadcast quality video, but it's a bit of a hassle sometimes and I like to mix it up as well. Eh, there you go, so yeah. That's the uh, first, I guess, business slash tech lesson here. Uh, diversify, diversify whatever you do, right? You don't wanna be dependent on a particular supplier, whether it be for payment processing, whether it be uh, for your social media presence and for your clients. If you're freelancing, you, you wanna have as many small clients as possible. You don't wanna have big clients. That's one of the big new mistakes I see a lot of business people make. They, they, they get into this fantasy of they want the big client. That big client make you all kinds of money. That is the worst thing you could possibly do. You don't want the big client. 
you want small clients. You want lots of small clients. I've told people for many years, you're better to have. You're better off to have twenty five small clients than five big clients, without a doubt. Because when you have very few big clients, they become your boss, and if they're your boss, you're gonna lose the independence of being a freelancer or owning a business if you have very few clients in there and they are your boss. But also it's more dangerous because when you have few big clients and they become effectively your boss and they know it, um, you have none of the protections of being an employee. <laughs> so you have the worst of both worlds, the worst of both worlds in that situation. So yeah, you don't want to, uh, have few clients. You want to have many small clients, much better. Because when you have 20 small clients and we assume that the amount of money you make from these clients is evenly distributed, approximately, meaning well, for sake of argument, each client makes you, I don't know, a thousand bucks a month, just for sake of argument, even numbers. And um, you lose one or one decides they're going to be a jerk with you. So you do what every... Every freelancer loves, you fire your clients. I tell you, when you fire a client, it's heaven, it's sugar, it's so good. So if you have nine, if you have 20 clients and you fire one, it's such a small hit, you don't care. You can, you can lose that 5% of your business, no big deal. But if you have five clients, and assuming again, even distribution in terms of revenue per client, you use you fire one, you lose twenty percent of your business. That's a hit. That's a Patreon hit. So you don't want to get into that. So yeah, diversify, diversify, diversify. That's what I always talk about. So you want to diversify your client base. You want to diversify your social media presence. You want to diversify your payment processing if you're taking online processing. You want to also have. Uh, your own website. See, the thing about owning a website, it's yours. It's yours. They can't take it away from you. They can't take it away from you. There's so many hosting companies you can move to in all parts of the world. You won't have to worry about political correctness uh, or uh, people going after you, trying to take you out because they don't like your politics. Um, that's what happens if you're solely dependent on social media sites because at the end of the day, you do not own, you do not own that social media location. My YouTube channel, it could be taken away from me like this if Google wanted to, if YouTube wanted to. I don't think they will because the nature of my content, but you never know. So anyway, that's today's vlog. That's today's lesson. Let me know what you think of these GoPro thing, GoPro delivered videos. I think that most people won't care. You know, most people won't care. My thinking about this, by the way, just to let you know, I'll give you a little business strategy. I use this super expensive camera here to produce uh, quote unquote official videos. So when I'm gonna be doing official studio web videos for marketing purposes or for training purposes for my for teachers and so on, I'll use that camera. When I do my new courses, I'm gonna use more of this cinema camera. But when it comes to vlogs and so on, there's some flexibility. I'll use, I'll use this cinema camera, I'll use this GoPro that I'm using here. I might use my cell phone. I got the Pixel 3. It shoots very good video. I'll use my Canon M50, which actually shoots really good video. If you're looking for something, a step up from a GoPro, you know what? It's been the big bucks. This is like one of the most understated cameras in the game. This camera is understated in terms of what it can do, its quality. I got a 22 millimeter lens. This shoots really amazing video with decent light, it even has pretty good built-in mics. You can put external mic. If you're looking to do video work, this is a great first camera. Like, really? Like, you can shoot really nice looking video with this if you know what you're doing. The secret to videography is lighting. Lighting is everything. Lighting is everything. Uh, you can make even the GoPro look pretty good if you have good lighting, and then the image quality will fall apart if you have or the image quality will fall apart if you have bad lighting. I don't want to swear on the... So yeah, for video, it's all about uh, light. It's all about lighting. Again, the basics. You look at uh, 
you look at my earlier videos when I first got that cinema camera, I didn't know what I was doing and the, 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 some, of the, some of the video looked terrible. I just don't know what I was doing. And it goes back to that principle I talk about in a lot of my videos in that the basics, the foundations is key to everything. It's key to everything. So for video, it's light. For sound, for great sound quality, it's proximity. See, if the mic is here, audio sounds really good. It sounds fine. But if the mic is back here, my audio is not as good, not as good. So proximity and the quality of the room. Now, this is a pretty big room. The fisheye nature of the GoPro makes it look smaller, but this is a big room. And so there's a lot of echo, more echo than you would have in a small room. So the sound quality is not going to be as good as it would be otherwise. But yeah, so for video, it's all about light. They call it exposure. For audio, it's proximity to the mic and the room. That would makes a difference. And I made the mistake of doing what people do on the programming side. I made the mistake of being concerned about the equipment. I've, I've spent thousands of dollars on mics. Uh, I've spent you know $10,000 on cameras. Oh, well, you know, if you know what you're doing with the big camera, it has certain advantages. Uh, same thing with software development. People are like concerned about what language to use or what framework to use, what is the best. A lot of times there is no best. It really depends on the type of work that you're doing. It depends on the circumstances. Great applications have been developed in Python, in PHP, in Ruby, in uh, C Sharp, in JavaScript, uh, any language. If you know how to write code well, you can produce pretty good software in any language. So don't get caught up with the language thing and the framework things, because at the end of the day, if you learn JavaScript and you decide you need to do something in Python, it's like this to switch over. Anyways, this is a kind of a long vlog, 17 minutes. Whoa, I don't know what's going to be when I edit it down. It'll probably be about 17 minutes. Let me know what you think. Let me know if this format is fun for you guys. All right, bye-bye.